Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhad in which we will look at asset allocation across risky and risk-free asset portfolios. This topic is covered on the CFA exam as well as essentials or principles of investments, graduate and undergraduate course. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,800 plus accounting, auditing, tax, finance, as well as Excel tutorial. If you like my lectures, please like them, share them, put them in playlists. If they help you, it means they might help other people connect with me on Instagram. On my website, farhatlectures.com, you will find additional resources to complement and supplement this course as well as your other courses. So to start the session, we want to be familiar with some basic concepts. Some of them are new, some of them you, already, you have already seen, but I want to make sure you are comfortable with them. The first one is asset allocation. So what do we mean by asset allocation? It's a portfolio choice among broad investment classes. For example, you want to invest in stocks, you want to invest in bonds, you want to invest in money market, you want to invest in treasury bills. Those are broad investment classes. Or you, or we have something called cap, capital allocation to risky asset. Now it's the choice between risky and risk-free asset. So for example, the T-bill is risk-free. Money market is considered risk-free. Stocks and bonds are considered risky asset. So the question becomes in the capital allocate capital allocation stage is how much do you invest for example do you want to do 60 40 50 50 you know 70 30 it's what percentage do you want to uh, do you want to allocate to risky asset complete portfolio is the entire portfolio including risky and risk free assets so when we say complete portfolio it include both whatever we chose in this stage risk free asset is the asset with a certain or guaranteed i'm going to put guaranteed in quote guaranteed return it means there's no issues with it and for the purpose of my course we're going to consider the, the u.s government treasury bills as a risk free risk free asset benchmark now, there are two other terms you need to be familiar with for this session. We already covered one of them is the Sharpe ratio, and it's the, the ratio of portfolio risk premium divided by two, the standard deviation. This should be a review for you, and we need to look at risk aversion, which, which is the reluctance to review to accept risk. You can review those bo bo both of these ratios, which is this is how we compute the Sharpe ratio, which is the risk premium divided by the standard deviation, and the risk aversion, which is is uh, is computed uh, uh, by by the symbol A. It's the risk premium dividing by the variance. Now, the reason I am mentioning those two topics here, although we we looked at them in the prior session, you can see the link in the description, is because we're going to be using them at the end. After we select the portfolio, we need to select how are we going to allocate the risky versus risk-free asset. So that's why I want to do that. So you have to, we always have to remember. I, I, I mentioned this in the prior session that you always you have to make a choice between risk and return. So it's always good to go back to this basic common sense concept. If you stay home and you don't do anything, if you take no risk, you should not have any return. But as you take risk, if you are a reasonable person, one level, two level, three level, level full level, full level of risk, you expect your return to go up as well. And let's assume one for one. Notice risk is risk and return, they're positively related. The more risk you take, calculated risk, the more return you would expect. So keep that in mind always when we are dealing with finance. Okay. So given the available trade-off between risk and return, there's a trade-off. The more risk you take, the more return you, you expect, which is common to all investors. Each individual can choose his or her preferred allocation between risky portfolio and risk-free assets. When you are, when you are, um, uh, preparing your portfolio. Do you want it to be 60 risky, 40 risk-free? Do you want it 50-50? So on and so forth. So you have to choose. 
The choice depends on your personal preferences and specifically the risk aversion that we talked about in the prior session, which can be computed. But the best way to illustrate this is to actually work an example to see how we build a portfolio. So let's assume we have a risky portfolio. We're going to call it P. We're going to allo allocate Y to the risky asset and Y minus 1 to risk-free asset. So basically, Y is everything that we have, the total budget. We're going to allocate some of it to risky asset and whatever whatever's left is to risk-free asset. So if we allocate it 60 to risky asset, what's left is 40%. And we're going to we're going to show the actual risky asset of return on the portfolio is the, re the risk of the portfolio. The expected rate of return for our portfolio, we expect to earn 15%. The standard deviation it's going to be 22%. The risk-free rate is 7%, therefore the risk premium is 8%, which is 15 minus 7, which would give us the risk premium for this portfolio of 8%. Now what we're going to do, we're, gonna com we're not computing, we're going to draw the capital allocation line given this portfolio. Now what is the capital allocation line? Let's look at the definition, then we would look at the port, we would look at the picture itself. Basically what we're looking at is, Plot of risk return combinations available by varying portfolio allocation between risk and risk free asset and risky portfolio. Now, the best way is for me to start to build this for you. Remember, we have return and we have risk. We have return and we have risk. And we're going to call the, the, the risk now the standard deviation. So the standard deviation for us is 22%. And we have the return you know, on the y-axis. So this is the x-axis, this is the y-axis. Now, here's what we can do. We can just take all our money and invest them in the treasury bill and earn 7%. So by doing so, treasury bill has zero risk. We can earn 7% without doing anything, without taking any risk. This is what we, what, what I mean by not doing anything. That's one, that's one option. All the money that we have, all of y, it will be 100% invested in here. Therefore, we have an we have a point here or here's what we can do we are risky people we're going to take all the money and invest it and our expected return is 15 percent but at this point we're going to be taking this is the standard deviation is 22 percent therefore the point they will meet someplace here so this is the other extreme the other extreme is invest all the money in risky assets okay so let's draw the line between those. And this is what our capital allocation line would look like. Now, are these the only two options that we have? Absolutely not. Guess what? I can take half of my money invested in, in risky asset, in risky asset, and the other half I want to invest it in risk-free asset. What will be my expected return if I did this? If I split my money 50-50, so Y is 50-50. Well, Here's what happened for my for my first 50 percent for my first 50 percent. It's going to be invested at 7 percent. And for the second 50 percent, I expect a return of 15 percent. So here's what's going to happen. 50 percent, 50 percent times 15 percent. That's going to give me 7.5 and 50 percent times 7. It's going to be give me 3.5, 3.5 plus 7.5 is 11 percent so here's what's going to happen if i put 50 50 i'm going to be earning around 11 percent and my and now my portfolio standard deviation i will show you later it's going to be also cut in half 11. so basically i will meet here in the third portfolio so notice any combination i make i'm going to fall along this line so even if i do 60 40 if i do 60 percent risk-free and 40 risky, I'm going to fall someplace on this line. So this is what we mean by capital allocation line. So any combination I, I, I undertake, it's going to fall on this line. And you notice the extreme, if I put everything in my, um, in the treasury bill, or if I invest everything, it's going to be on the same line, on the same line. So this is another picture of what I'm just, what I just talked about. So here's the, uh, here's if I, split everything 50 50 i'll make approximately 11 percent and the standard deviation will be 11 percent if i invest everything this is p it means i'm quite risky f i'm very conservative and uh, the sharpie ratio s equal to eight 
divided by 22. What is 8? 8 in this portfolio is the risk premium. Risk premium. If I take the risk premium divided by the standard deviation, which is 22, I'll get my sh I will get my Sharpie ratio. We'll see that in a moment. But this is what the capital allocation line looks like. And I can also invest more money that I have by borrowing, which will, will work an example in the, at the end of this session to show you if you use leverage, how do you compute this? But anyway, if you use leverage, you would still fall along this line, along this line, the capital allocation line. Now, the, the so let's just have some general statement about this capital allocation line. The first thing is the risk premium of the complete portfolio equal to the risk premium of the risky asset times the fraction of the portfolio. Of course, the risk premium, it's going to be only to the portfolio because the risk-free has no premium. The risk-free is does, does not have a premium. So it's the, the portion of the portfolio that's invested multiplied by the risk premium, which is the expected return minus the risk-free. Also, the standard deviation of the complete portfolio, it's only equal to, to the standard deviation of the risky assets times the fraction of the portfolio invested in those risky assets. Of course, that's the case because the risk-free assets don't have a standard deviation. They have a standard deviation of zero. So if we invested 60% in risk-free asset and 40% in in uh, in risky asset, this 60% will have a standard deviation of zero, which will give us 60. Then the, the remaining 40%, whatever the standard deviation, if it's 22, this will be the standard deviation of the portfolio. So simply put, the standard deviation of the portfolio is only composed of the risky asset, of the risky asset. It's just stuff you need to be aware of. We can generalize. The risk premium which is 8% and the standard deviation of the complete portfolio increase in proportion to the investment in the risky portfolio. And this should make sense from the, sh from the Sharpie, uh, from the Sharpie ratio, um, the risk premium and the standard deviation increase in proportion to the investment. So if you want to increase your investment, you want to increase this, uh, increase your risk, you would increase the Sharpie portfolio. But let's take a look at the different portfolios. The first portfolio we said its expected return is 15, the risk premium is eight, the standard deviation is 22. Also, if we want to compute the Sharpie ratio, it's gonna be eight, which is the risk premium divided by 22 equal to 0.36. Now with the portfolio C, the expected return is 11 when we put 50-50, the risk premium is, uh, is 4%. Why? Because it's 11. Uh, the expected return, 11 minus 7, will give us 4%. 7 is the, is the risk-free. And the standard deviation is 11. Again, if we take, if we'll do the same thing, we'll take 4% divided by 11. It's also going to give us a Sharpie ratio of 0.36. Simply put, the Sharpie ratio is will give you the same as long as you are on this capital allocation line. The, ne the next question is, what is the best, how can we find the best allocation? So this is, so this is, we can be here, we can be here, we can be here, we can be anywhere on this line. The question becomes, what is the most, the best allocation on the risky portfolio? Well, think about it before we kind of look at the answers. It all depends on the risk tolerance of the individual. Okay. If the individual can tolerate risk, we will be, our portfolio will be closer to P or P is the maximum. If, if the on the other extreme, our uh, investor is uh, has a risk does not have risk tolerance, risk totally risk averse. We our portfolio will sit in F, or it could be someplace along this line. But we can measure this. We can measure where should we be based on the risk aversion and the Sharpie ratio. So investors' degree of risk aversion A. This is what we looked at in the prior session. Measure the price of risk the individual demands from a complete portfolio in which her entire wealth is invested. So we're going to look at the degree of risk aversion and the compensation for risk demanded by the investor must be compared to the price of risk offered by the risky portfolio. What is the price of risk? This is the Sharpie, Sharpie, uh, Sharpie ratio. So we're going to look at these two ratios together so we can find the investor preferred capital allocation which is, you know, how much invested in risky asset and risk-free asset by dividing the risky portfolio price price of risk, which is again, Sharpie ratio and, and by divided by the investor's risk aversion divided by A. And simply put, this is the equation. We're going to look at the, uh, we're going to basically look at the Sharpie divided by A. That's basically what we're looking at. 
and we're going to get a number. And based on this number, we're going to see how we allocate the fund. So let's assume we have a price risk of two. So the Sharpie ratio for our example is two. And the risk aversion is 3.91, 3.91. Here's what we do now. We'll take two divided by 3.91 and we'll get 0.51. It means based on this individual risk tolerance and the price of risk based on the standard deviation, we would invest. Notice 51, almost 50-50. 51, let's be more specific, 51% in risky asset. It means we're going to invest 49% in the 7%, which is the risk-free asset. This is what we mean by that. Now we have to understand how these two, uh, these two ratio, these two numerator and denominator work together. The optimal allocation to the risky portfolio is directly proportional to the, to its price risk, which is the Sharpie ratio. Simply put, let's assume you increase the two to 3.91. So I make it 3.91 to show you it's going to increase and it's going to give me easier math. So if I increase the numerator, the shot of the sharp ratio increase to 3.91 divided by 3.91, now I invest everything in the risky asset. The answer equal to one, it means 100% in risky asset. So you, so the first thing you want to know is if you increase the numerator, which is the, which is the Sharpie ratio, the price of risk, the risky asset will go up. However, it's inversely related to the uh, investors risk aversion. Now, the opposite is the opposite will happen here. If you increase this from 3.91 to 4, this is going to go down to exactly 5. Now it's 50 50. So notice it's uh, the, the risky asset are directly proportionate to the price of risk, but they're inver inversely related to the risk aversion. Make sure you know this relationship, uh, how it works, and what makes it makes it more sense. Make sure you go back to the prior session and see how we compute the price of risk and the risk aversion. That's very, very important. It kind of makes it easier for you. The last thing we're gonna do is gonna, we're gonna look at an example where we use leverage um, and try to make more sense out of it because I showed you in the when I was illustrating this model that we can be beyond Y. Um, y can be more than one. So just let me show you the graphs because I told you here, we're going to come back and say Y is more than one, 1 1.25. You know, what does that mean? It means we borrowed more money than what we have. Okay, that will work an example illustrating this concept. So let's suppose that the investment budget is 300,000 and investor borrows an additional 120. So basically we borrowed an additional 40% because 120 divided by 300,000 is 40%. So we have 420,000. So Y, the total money that we have is not one, Y equal to 1.4 because we borrowed money. We borrowed money an additional 120,000. Now, one minus Y, Okay, one minus y is 1.4 equal to negative four. What does negative four mean? Negative four reflect a short position in risk-free asset. Short position means you borrowed money because you have to, when, when you have to pay something back, it means you are short. You have a short position, you have to pay it back. It's like a liability or a borrowing position. So you have 0.4, which is in dollar amount, 120,000, but just kind of since we are using percentages. So rather than lending money at four, at 7%, the investor here borrows the money at 7%. With the weight of 0.4, this is why this is important. You're going to see why the weight is important. Why are we saying 0.4 in the risk-free asset and 1.4 in risky portfolio? So simply put, here's what we did. We borrowed money. Because we borrowed money, that additional 40%, we have to pay on it. That's an expense. But that borrowed money, it's going to go and add it to our Y. So now we have 1.4, Y equal to 1.4. And that 1.4, it's going to be invested in, in quote, high return. So hopefully, if it works well for us, we'll do better because now we have, we're going to pay risk-free return, which is low return and make a higher return. Hopefully, that's what's going to happen. So simply put, our expected return should go up. Why? Now we have... 7% times negative 0.4. Notice it's negative 0.4 times 7% because we're paying money. So notice here it's negative. Plus, now we have 1.4. They always has to equal to 100. 1 1.4 minus 0.4 equal to 100. So the weight has to equal to 100. But now we have 100, 140% multiplied by the expected return of 15. And hopefully you already figured out that our expected return is no longer 15% for this portfolio. Our expected return is 18.2. Why? Although, although we thought it's 15, but since we are leveraging, our expected return will go up.
will be higher. So our expected return for this portfolio is 18.2. And the reason is because we borrowed money at seven and we think we're going to make 15% on it. But we have to pay back the seven and what's left will be profit. And as a result, it will increase our return to 18.2. So that's why our ret return went up. Now, another way to compute this, another way to compute this is to is to do it through the dollar amount. And how do I do so through the dollar amount? I am investing 420,000 at 15%. As a result, I'm going to be making $63,000. However, I borrowed 120,000 and I have to pay pay back the interest of 7% on this money. Therefore, my interest expense is 8,400. Now what I need to do from my total return I have to deduct 8,400 and as a result, I'm going to be left with $54,600. If I take $54,600 divided by my initial investment of 300,000, I should be earning 18.2% on this portfolio. Again, back to the same 18.2. What we did is we computed this differently through the dollar amount here. Here we did it through the weight. Make sure you know how to do it both ways. And make sure you do so. It means you understand it. Okay. Also, what we what we can find out is the portfolio standard deviation. Remember, the portfolio standard deviation is only the standard deviation of the risky asset. The risky asset represent one point four percent of the portfolio. Hold on a second. It's more than one hundred percent. That's right, because you borrowed money one point four times the standard deviation. So the standard deviation of the portfolio is thirty point eight. Hold on a second. Didn't you say it's 22? It is 22, but I leveraged. Once I leverage, my, my, my risk goes up. Remember, when you borrow money and you leverage up, that's risky. That's risky. Your risk goes up. And notice, notice here in numbers, you see, as you leverage, your risk goes up. How does it go up? Measured by the standard deviation went from 22 to 30. And the Sharpie ratio for this portfolio is 11. It's a point three. 6.36. Again, as you might have expected, the leverage portfolio has both a higher expected return and a higher standard higher standard deviation than an unleveraged position in the risky asset. Of course, when you borrow money, risk goes up. Risk goes up. Return goes up. Notice your return goes up. Your expected return goes up, but your risk goes up as well. Again, back to the idea of more risk, more return, less risk, less return. That's the general idea. In the next session, I will take a look at the diversification and portfolio risk, or I, I might work an example, another example that deals with this topic. We'll see how it goes. Anyhow, I'm always going to invite you to like the recording, share it, and don't forget to visit my website, farhatlectures.com, for additional resources to complement and supplement this course as well as your other accounting and finance courses. Good luck, study hard, and stay safe.